Hi, uh, morning everybody. I'm Lucy and this is Liz. We are from uh, Lucy Chang Fine Art and uh, today we're going to talk about street art. And uh, of course, uh, if we talk about um, street art or even contemporary art, people will think Murakami is one of the iconic um, artists in our times. So today we'll talk about Murakami and uh, his uh, four disciples. So that's um, Masaki, Tanga One, and Snipe One, and uh, Diego. Am I it's on the screen? Okay. So you can see, hey, go go pointer, you more pointer. So it's our first time doing live, uh, so we're a bit nervous, and because of the situation, so hope it's not too boring for you, and. Um, uh, we're not academics, so we try to do some research, but if there's something missing or any mistakes, please, please let us know. And um, so here you can see, you have a pointer. Uh, oh, there's uh, Masaki and uh, Diego and uh, Tango one there with a smiley face covering their face because they're, they're graffiti writers, so they don't want to show their face. And uh, Liz is going to give a little background about uh, Murakami first. Um, thank you, Lucy. Um, as we all know, Murakami is one of the most popular artists in the contemporary art scene nowadays. And um, one of the reasons why he's a set in doing so is because uh, he breaks the rules in the art world and creates his own one. And he is successful in uh, breaking the boundaries between high art and low art. And um, let us uh, let me give you a little bit background of Murakami. And he was born in Tokyo in 1962, and he attended um, Tokyo National University of Fine Arts to study um, Nihonga style of painting at that time. And then um, later in um, later years, he received opportunity to participate in international studio program in New York. So he moved to New York and um, lived for a couple of years. And here's the very first um, paintings of Murakami in Nihonga style. And then um, he started to create some pure contemporary art pieces. Um, uh, because he was not uh, really so successful in doing so, so he wondered, is there any way that he can um, create his own form of art instead of following the traditional way? Um, so super flat is the theory. Uh, he he created to combine the high arts and the low arts. Um, here's one of the example he created of the iconic character Mr. Dob and insert the character into the Nihonga style paintings. And let us see how he talks about the super flat theory. That is completely flatness composition. A uh, lot of chickens, a lot of dogs. The painter is organizing for the eyeball moving. For example, who is the highest level in Japanese culture scene is a comic writer is the highest. Yeah, so he continues to create art pieces based in super flat style and here's some example of uh, his works in the early... Oh, that's Kai Kai and uh, Kiki. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the two iconic characters. And then his works becomes more complicated in um, um, forms and the context. And um, in late 2000s, there's a breakthrough that LV approaches um, Murakami to start uh, collaborations and they create some art pieces and at that time Murakami becomes a superstar and um, followed by a couple of exhibitions and um, shows across the world and you can see his works uh, continues to evolve in times 
And here's uh, one of the uh, big um, exhibition that I would like to share with you. It's the one in Tycoon Contemporary last year in Hong Kong. It is the most important one in his career life. I so I hope all of you has been <laughs> have seen it already. Yeah, it's just really a great hit. And um, uh, his style and his um, unique way of creating art attracted many celebrities and brand collaborations. Oh yeah, here's me. Uh, actually, I met him the first time in 2016 at a dinner. He was sitting next to me. And uh, he was so into social media, so we took a selfie, and immediately he he posted on his Instagram. And later on, I met him a few times at uh, different fairs, and also I visited uh, Kakakiki in Tokyo. And uh, he he set up the, the the gallery to promote international artists. So. Wendy, Wendy White was one of the artists that he created the show, and then uh, so I was lucky to be there. And uh, of course, I didn't miss the big show in Tycoon. Yeah. Um, uh, we would like to talk about street art and how they meet. Uh, here is how they first met back in 2007, and uh, the image shows a billboard for Murakami show in Mocha Museum in LA. And then there were two artists, two graffiti artists without permission, put their graffiti on this billboard. And um, the reaction from Murakami was like, um, this is really quite interesting. So he started to include um, graffiti elements in his words eight years later because he really f uh, thought that graffiti is full of playfulness and full of fun that deserve as much attention as those high arts. And uh, by bringing the graffiti into his artworks, it is actually in line with the super flat theory he creates that to, to, to break, to burn the lines between high culture and low culture. So um, later on, he even included the graffiti words in his museum shows. For example, the one in Garage Museum of Contemporary Art Moscow in 2017, and the one in uh, Museum of Contemporary Art Chicago. You can see the graffiti elements are in the artworks in the background and also on the sculpture here. Yeah. So and uh, he he made in his museum shows he actually brought all the disciples with him like Masaki and Snipe One. Yeah. Um. So you may wonder what actually is street art or street culture. Um. Street culture in general is popular styles of urban centers. So nowadays it mainly refers to skateboarding, hip hop, graffiti, street fashion and hipsters. While street art is visual art created in public locations for public visibilities and, and in, it includes graffiti and installation and sculptures. So we, well, because it's a live stream, we were supposed to have an audience before, so we gathered some questions. Uh, so one of the questions was, um, any difference between graffiti and street art? Actually, we cannot say there's a difference because graffiti is part of street art in the bigger picture. So street art could be performance arts, could be uh, music, and graffiti is just part of it. And uh, I would like to introduce you a little bit of graffiti. So graffiti could be writing or drawing made on public space. And uh, so there's some few styles like tagging. Tagging is using like uh, marker pens or just very, very bold letters. They normally just put their name. And uh, throw up is another style that is um, together similar with tagging but with more color. And posters, standstills, and stickers are just very quick ways of doing um, uh, graffiti art. 
uh, as graffiti is prohibited in most countries, so the artists, they just really need to work fast. So stencils, like stickers and posters, just really quick way of uh, putting their art around town. And uh, a lot of the artists, they work at night. So, um, so mainly the, the medium is mainly spray paint and uh, marker pen is commonly used. And uh, the graffiti culture is quite an interesting culture. So this is the show we did for um, One Toe and Neck Face. Uh, one Toe is Japanese graffiti artist and uh, Neck Face is from America. So this is my first street art um, exhibition in my gallery uh, in 2018. So we had the artist painted our outside wall. And um, it's really funny. They, the community, the graffiti community, they really respect each other. So when I invited the next artist to paint on my walls, they said, oh, Lucy, I think you should uh, make an announcement first before you washed it off. So I actually made an announcement on Instagram saying that we have last week of showing um, one toe and neck face. And after I washed that, then the next graffiti artist was happy to paint on my walls. So they kind of really respect each other. Yeah, so this is another question that we got earlier is um, how can an artist get final credit for his works? Um, it's, of course, early on was very difficult. And uh, here we'd like to show a lawsuit that the artist actually won. This is a milestone for all the graffiti artists. And in 2018, um, these group of artists, like uh, Five Points, they're their um, their works were washed off by the developer, and um, but under the um, under the Visual Artist Rights Act, um, they were they actually won the case. So um, so the property had to pay these artists, yeah, a lot of money. So this is a milestone for all the graffiti artists. Yeah. And of course, um, now slowly they're getting more credits. For example, like Bensi and uh, even Basquiat, he was uh, a graffiti artist at the beginning. And uh, now we focus on the young artists, um, the disciples. So we talk about Masaki, Diego, Tango One, and Snipe One. So these four artists has been with uh, Murakami for uh, recent years. And um, Murakami has been pushing them and bringing them to his various shows. Uh, of course, we'd like to just quickly introduce Kai Kai Kiki Gallery. So it was founded by Murakami to actually work on his projects and all his um, uh, merchandise and collaborations. And uh, also he creates uh, exhibitions in the space. And Zingaro is uh, set up recently, more in more recent years. It's a space um, outskirt of Tokyo, and there he will show more experimental young artists. And, um, and also it's a cafe, so you could have uh, sunflower burgers there. Oh, here's Masaki. You can see he's uh, quite a big guy. And uh, we have a clip about him. Whew. This thing gets nasty in summertime. When I grew up in the States, every summer my dad um, brought us to different countries. So every, every country we go, we had to go to the museum. So I grew up looking at all those famous paintings around the world. Every time I see the painting, I always wanted to like draw something on the, the real painting. It's, it's perfect, you know? And perfect thing to me is so boring. It doesn't look like, does it look like Kanye? It does. <laughs> so yeah, this is him. And people might wonder what is, what does Masaki mean? Actually, it's quite simple. It's mad sake. He, he really enjoys drinking sake. And uh, so um, he was born in, in Japan, but he grew up in New Jersey. And he graduated from the Parsons School of Design in New York. 
And uh, actually, so, so his experience of uh, two cultures, which formed his personality and uh, artistic style. So his interest um, mainly centers on art history and the critiquing mass culture with reference to slang, movies, and manga characters. But recently, he's been exploring more uh, personal and intimate um, topics. So um, he developed a signature style using spray paint as a fine art medium. Um, he's very, um, you can see these pictures. He's uh, parodying all the masterpieces. And uh, also last year when he had his solo in Hong Kong, he, um, he, he, he painted the, the poster of the Kung Fu Hustle movie. So it's, he's really, he used his uh, laughter and humor as both as um, distraction and therapy for his internal turmoil. Because when he grew up in the States, he experienced actually a lot of racism and, um, and uh, bullying. So this, um, you can see, he, he's a very big guy, but he always laugh and, and talk loud or quite funny. But it's kind of like a cover up to, to hide his inner, um, inner pain, I would say, yeah. Um, so these are some of his collaborations uh, with Murakami. So, and uh, he went to different shows with him. And here's one of the work that he used his uh, typical spray can style with uh, Murakami's uh, smiley face and skull. And this is one of his early, well, uh, first show in Zingaro Gallery. And this one was in Kakakiki Gallery. So Murakami actually pushed him quite hard. Imagine an artist having a solo every year. It's quite a lot of work. And he worked as a designer very early age. I mean, early days, in, even in 2006, he was collaborating with uh, Clot. He was designing uh, clothes for the Clot fashion brand. And uh, me, I, I first saw his work in 2016 um, in Japan. And uh, he's, I saw his Wannabe series, which is now the most popular uh, series among the collectors. And later on, I, of course, saw him in different uh, exhibitions. And I went to his uh, solo exhibition in Bangkok in 2018, where he painted his iconic smiley face on my shoulder. There. So the next artist we would like to talk about is Tango One. Uh, we wonder what does Tango One mean? So actually, it means art is my calling. So Tango Wan um, grew up in the near the um, U.S. Army base in Japan, so he ha he was very much influenced by the American culture, and he started um, graffiti at the age of fourteen, and he was very active in the nineties, and his style is very versatile. So he had um, of this this monster on the left side of the screen uh, is his very iconic. Um, image that he always used. And this, this monster actually portrays the, the absurdity of modern society, such as wars, uh, national disasters, and uh, political and um, economic failures. But he also used this to represent himself and as well as the audience. So we will see um, his breakthrough actually came through this set of works, which, would, which look like cardboard but actually they're not. They are actually sculptures. They are wooden sculptures that to make to look like cardboard. And all the details, um, here we have one, you can, let's see the details of this work. It's three dimensional. So every details, even the, the coffee drain on the, on the table, the tape, he painted it. All this, he painted them. So he was um, a sculpture to look like a cardboard. Yeah. And also you will notice uh, a lot of his uh, characters, they're Disney characters, because he, he actually worked with uh, um, Disney uh, animation. And uh, also you will notice a lot of the works of the face are distorted. 
because he says that this represents the graffiti artists because graffiti artists never show their full face. And so we have showed, showed him um, in our booth in 2018, and uh, he was very, very popular, I must say. And the next artist uh, we're introducing is Snipe One. And uh, if you follow his Instagram, it's um, called um, Fukidol Tokyo. You could imagine what that means. Um, so he was a pioneer uh, Japanese graffiti writer. He was very active, uh, first in Japan. And then he went to live in New York in his teenage years. So there he, he even uh, embraced more of the graffiti. So he's very pop, um, known in the international graffiti world, the, society, the, the community. And uh, well, he's, um, graf uh, Snipes graffiti draws upon the, draws upon the uh, sensibility of street culture, but incorporates the edge of dirtiness that's kind of um, his styles. And recent years, he's been collaborating with um, a lot of uh, fashion brands as well. And uh, we can see him. Oh, this is the show he did at Zingaro Tokyo. Very colorful and spray paint, a lot of characters. So this is one of his projects in the um, Ishihara Lakeside Museum in Japan. That's one of his projects in Germany. And uh, this is the most recent show in LA where he put his um, graffiti works onto canvas. And uh, we are also showing him in our upcoming sh exhibition. So the next artist is uh, Diego. Actually, this do look like him. Uh, Diego was born in Japan, and he, he never went to any art school. Um, he's always on the street. If you follow his Instagram, his stories, he's always everywhere on the street on his bike. So his works also portrays the street. You can see um, rat, um, spray cans, buildings, pipes, or even garbage. So he kind of uh, brings this, um, this, brings this street into his work, yeah, and um, it's kind. Of, he rearranged these um, visual elements in manga abstract style, so it's kind of a modern graffiti style that combines abstract painting with uh, distorted cartoon characters. And uh, uh, Diego is introduced like a strange but a very familiar cityscape to the viewers. Oh, this is his show in Zingaro. And uh, Diego also have uh, worked and followed Murakami a lot. So you could see on the left screen is a Murakami exhibition in Tycoon. And there have, uh, Diego painted the, the wall. And he also painted uh, many of the Art Basel fair, um, the, the backdrop. He and a few artists, they painted. So uh, we have shown him since 2019, and he's been very well received in Hong Kong, also in Taiwan. We've shown him twice in Taiwan. Um, here is Beyond the Street 2019, and it is one of the, uh, actually it is the most uh, important festival in street arts. Um, um, last year, Muraka Murakami actually brought um, his uh, disciples, including Masaki, Tango One, and also Snipe One, together into this festival, and they created huge pieces of artworks, uh, like the this one um, um, with many paintings and the sculpture here. So one of the questions that came earlier was, can street art be presented in galleries and museums? Yes, of course. Uh, as you've seen in the different museum shows with Murakami, um, the graph and also the group show in in in, uh, in America, the all the street art and graffiti are actually going to the museum. And uh, here also we did. Hey, how many play? Hmm? 
Yeah, this is what we showed in our space, another uh, Japanese graffiti artist. So, and inside um, the gallery, we had uh, pieces on canvas. So the other question came in earlier was how we can better engage a public with street art. So what we did is uh, when our artists paint um, on our walls, we put on live stream so that everybody could, could see it and follow. And uh, we also work with a lot of uh, brands. So um, one way of uh, working with um, street art and uh, graffiti artists is, uh, I, I hope everybody, who, when you see some art on the street, do take picture, um, do post on, on social media, and do tag them, then so more people would know it. Yeah. Um, I guess you may like to take a taste of our street arts in galleries, so here's the chance. Um, we would like to announce our upcoming shows uh, next week in our gallery. It is uh, the Accenture Offline Show. And um, so we will be exhibiting works from um, mainly five of our artists. They are Diego from Tokyo, Stipe One from Tokyo, You Know Me Well from Berlin, Awutasu from Tokyo too, and Eddie come from Seoul. Uh, although their styles are different, but um, all of them um, paints to uh, address different issues in the society. Okay, so uh, this was another question that came in earlier, was uh, where do we see Hong Kong street art in the next five years? Actually, Hong Kong street art is very vibrant. Um, we have organizations like uh, Hong Kong Walls that uh, organize artists to paint on different walls uh, legally. Uh, and uh, there's uh, you could experience a lot of street arts everywhere. Like I said earlier, um, we should post them on social medias and we should always tag them. And uh, I think uh, there's going to be growing numbers of street art appreciation in, in well, not next five years, even in the next two years. So uh, thank you all very much. And uh, if you want to know more, you can follow us on our social media to get the updates. And you can also see our uh, essential online show here. And um, if you would like to attend our upcoming show, you can register in the link here. And um, thank you very much for um, uh, seeing our live stream talk today. Thank you. Thank you.